Hello, this is First Fire Non Assault Move. Welcome back to the 42nd video in the War in the East series. Let's get a situation report. It's still December. I think this was a five week December because the f first week of December was in the like the third or something, something odd how it uh, entered. So, yeah, some of these months are longer than others. So, this is either, at least the fourth week of December. 31st, the very cusp of 1943. That's big news. So let's get a situation report. And let's talk about losses since I forget to do that often. So let's get to info screens. Well, that's order of battle, which we're going to talk about in a, in a second. All right, so we'll go back to ground losses here. This turn, well, the, uh, to step back a second... I've advanced two weeks. This video is going to encompass two weeks of action because on turn 80, turn 80, there wasn't much to report. We were just uh, getting back into attack positions, uh, trying to get organized, trying to get uh, p uh, troops in position around Zaporozhye and Nechopetrovsk and up around Talinin and trying to organize our forces for the next week. And that's kind of the pattern over the past month. We we kind of lurch forward with all these attacks, uh, doing some really good damage to the Soviets, and then we have to catch a breath, recover, catch up. Movement and attack is very limited in the blizzard, but we're still able to do that. So turn 80, not much to report. Turn 81, most of the successes and progress took place after we reassembled on turn 80. So two weeks uh, of action on this video. So getting to the losses. So the Soviets almost lost 200,000 troops during this turn, which on turn 81, we're finally in position. We arrayed our forces enough and brought enough combat power against Petrovsk and Zaporozhye to finally take those cities. And also we collapsed and destroyed all the Soviet forces in Army Group North area of operations. So that's really where the, the casualty count uh, comes from. Look right here, 103,000 uh, Soviets surrendered, captured. And we routed a whole bunch of forces over the past two turns, and that kind of added up. This turn in particular, I think we had five or six routes. That's almost a total destruction of, uh, of the order of battle for that unit. Guns up there. Tanks, not as much, even though we did destroy a number of Soviet armored formations. I guess they are, were showing signs of wear and tear, and they didn't have the full complement of their tanks. So only 459. I know, I'm, I don't want to sound cocky here, but only 459 uh, this turn. Destroyed units. So I did a count. Manually counted. If we go back... To, where's that 55 number? That's way too far back. I had it, so it's 55. I stepped back a little because we had those smaller pockets during the initial spring-summer offensive that we were able to destroy, like 20 Soviet formations. And if we counted from turn 55 up to the current turn, just with these numbers, it's over 200 Soviet formations have been destroyed amongst though amongst that figure though is the support units the battalion regimental sized uh, forces that are attached to the core headquarters so those those are included in the losses so that's over 200 but at division core level and those airborne brigades and tank brigades over 131 soviet uh, formations destroyed since uh, turn 64. So that's a gruesome tally that we inflicted upon the Soviets in 1942. And who would have thunk it, right? 1942 didn't start too well for us, but we more than made up for it. A lot of, a lot of the damage coming once snow started to fall. And that's remarkable. I'm very pleased with that. So let's look at the order of battle. Uh, M60 was talking about that, and I don't think there's any other spot 
to look at the Soviets' order of battle. And if M60 could point that out for me, that'd be great. But this is pretty telling. Six million Soviet forces, right? That's hundreds, hundred thousand. Six million uh, in manpower, and it's not that much more than the Germans, which who have almost four million in the field. And tanks, 6,000. We almost have 7,000 AFVs. We really, really made a concerted effort to preserve our armored, our tank, our panzers throughout the war in the East since day one. And I think the, I guess, rather cautious approach and very deliberate approach I took to the winter of 1941, giving ground instead of trying to retain territory, I think that really helped preserve German forces to get us into position for 1942 and, and getting to the point where we are now. So almost 7,000 panzers out there, and a lot of them still 1942 level panzers. Some of them, uh, probably a good portion of them obsolete by now, but still contributing. Soviets only 8,000 tanks. We're well over 30,000, uh, we've inflicted well over 30,000 tank losses upon the Soviets. So that is also remarkable. They dwarf us in guns, you know, Red God of War, all those Soviet field pieces. Incredibly impressive what the Soviets are able to produce. Well over our mark at 35,000. And aircraft, yeah, they're, they're well ahead of us in aircraft as well. So those two categories in troop count, much better than uh, the Germans have. But the important ones, more important categories, I think, is our soldiers, soldats, Lanzer, and our panzers. We're not too far in troop count from the Soviets. I think that reflects the, the tremendous damage we've done to the Soviets in 1942. Pretty, pretty happy about that. So most of the success, we'll get a situation report here, occurred during 81, during 81, the last week of December. We finally finished off the Soviets uh, to include the seven formations that were down here and also the formations that we trapped uh, in this sector. We destroyed them as well. Did we finish them off? Yeah, here we go. We made a number of attacks, uh, pushing, pushing them to the Gulf of Finland destroying them there and finally geez you know we finally destroyed one soviet uh formation here that's been in and around talonin really really dogged furious defense attacking out of talonin pushing us back so soviets are not done in the talon region but slowly we have accumulated a force that i think we can bring to bear and at least eliminate this division and then concentrate on talonin Soviets managed to bring up forces along this little slender land bridge abutting the Gulf of Finland, but we're also going to, in the next couple of weeks, probably two weeks from now, we'll shake all this out and get into good order and into attack positions and see what we can do against the Soviets that are marshalling against us here to form a defensive line. So further down to Peskov, we continue to make attacks, just pushing putting strain on the Soviets on this front and I don't want I kind of don't want to attack much more I want to have the Soviets remain in place here should we be able to break out come around and get another potential encirclement or completely displace them without having to waste manpower and resources just attacking into the Soviets where it's relatively equal combat power all right, and we did get some reinforcements still trickling in. Where was that? Interesting headquarters. I'll show you. That just arrived. Are you further back? Where did you go? All right, I'll get my bearings and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Oh, here's one. Six Luftwaffe uh, Field Division and... Did we not get you closer? I guess we didn't get you that much closer. A third Luftwaffe Field Corps. 
So this, these are, I guess, Luftwaffe, you know, Luftwaffe personnel, which I guess, you know, not to get into politics, and this part of uh, World War II on the Eastern Front, and in World War II in general with the Germans, I know there was com some consternation about the Luftwaffe fielding land troops when they should have been better served uh, in aircraft. Anyway, so the, we got a little headquarters coming up, and that's good. Take some of the strain off our infantry corps to uh, distribute some of the command and control amongst these formations because we're really tapped out in some of these headquarters at 5 and 6 almost everywhere. All right, moving down, Piskov, no real change. Nice straight line here. All the way down to Velikai Luki. Soviets came into contact where we pulled back a little bit, and I wasn't going to waste any resources here. I guess I could make some attacks here because these, these are in decent shape. You know, I forgot to do this. Let's do this on camera real quick. Another route. I have to tell you, it's it's kind of a theme this turn. It has to be over over a dozen, half a dozen now. Oh my god! All right, that's just to push him back. And this division looks a little beat up, and there's no river there. Let's gang up on him. Trying to manage smoking a cigar while I'm doing my video. <laughs> All right, so Velikai Luki looking good. Soviet forces pushed back, not allowing them to get those fort levels in front of us. This little elbow, no change. Just remaining in place, digging in as we can along this front, the Smolensk sector. And from Smolensk all the way down to the Bryant sector as well, have this little bit of a I wouldn't say well it's a pretty straight line right here and a little bit of a salient a little bulge sticking out here kind of baiting the Soviets to push some of their armored core in here and then we'll just cut them off and destroy them which we've been doing Soviets pretty strong in front of Arel still so they're pushing back our infantry divisions they're getting six to nine uh, of their formations against single divisions of ours and they're, they're getting pretty good combat resolutions just pushing us back but that's really amounting to nothing uh, and in this sector again so it's kind of strong pushing up against the Italian here with the German support and around Kursk all right here's here's the next thing to point out that is pretty significant we finally committed who did we have up there we had 57th and the 30th along with was it the 14th yeah so there's three panzer corps well actually there's only two the 57th and the 14th the 30th only has one panzer division to its name right now and I'm, i have to think how i am going to distribute uh in the future some panzer divisions to the 30th but right now it they're just sitting here resting and refitting so the 57th and the 14th sprung into action broke through this sector i wanted to get rid of this salient whether we're going to encircle all these forces or not that that would be great if we get uh the greater part of these soviet formations in this little salient but the idea is to straighten out the line as much as possible because we're going to be through into the spring before we know it and the straighter we line, the straighter our front we can get, the better, since we're not we're going to be pretty much immobile during the mud season. But really, the idea is to destroy these Soviet forces and straighten the lines, because it'll free up all these forces of our own to throw in, uh, to get into the line and strengthen our own front and shorten our lines. So we move further south from Kursk all the way down. Ah, okay, let's talk about it right now. Look at that. Let's just take a moment and look at that. Finally, finally, Metropetrovsk and Zaporozhye have fallen. It wasn't easy. 
they lasted this long. I think it's been three weeks. Three weeks at least for Netropetrovsk. And Zaporozhye. It took two weeks to take Zaporozhye. Uh, okay, uh, yeah, Netropetrovsk fell on turn 80, so I can't show you the attacks there. But we... Took us only one turn, but we, we massed up 71,000 of our own troops attacking only against 28,000. But they had a... Um, we slowly whittled down their fort levels, so we were able to route them, which is a little puzzling. They are well behind our lines, but somehow they routed out. I think it's these right here. Somehow they routed all <laughs> through all these German formations to get back to the uh, Soviet lines, back through the Soviet lines. Maybe some stragglers made it through. So Netro Petrovsk and Zaporozhye finally, oh my lord. So what we are starting to do is to shape operations here along this sector with our infantry pushing against the Soviets, causing some strain as well. And also, we've arrayed our Panzer Corps. They were in the thick of the fighting around Netropetrovsk and Zaporozhye. They contributed to some of the attacks on Zapor Zaporozhye as well. So we're trying to get them back in to the front and start to shape operations here as well as a breakout, potentially, to the Sea of Azov in this area, sealing off these Soviet formations. And now, 11th Army has kind of separated. They've shook out now. They have the bridgehead. What is that river? It's hard to read. Melachachana? Well, this river right here that issues into the Sea of Azov, we have established a very strong bridgehead. Again, broke uh, broke through on a 20-mile uh, gap here. More concern for the Soviets. And also, we committed the 3rd Panzer and the 36th. Is it the 36th? 39th, 39th Panzer Corps, in an effort to reach the Crimea, the, the, the land bridge as it goes into the Crimea, cutting off the Soviets that have been defending all along in this sector against the Romanians. And we almost were able to achieve it. I didn't want to string out a couple of these motorized divisions. You know, not getting greedy. Again, that theme, preserve our forces. We're pretty strong here definitely no threat from the south the soviets will have to organize come and mass up but at the most they'll get maybe this motorized division to retreat but they have room to retreat either this way or or, or to the south or to the east and the soviets here are going to have to disengage and make their way movement definitely hindered they might not make it all the way to this hex where they're going to be able to escape because the Germans have cut off all egress except for this hex, really. Because they're not going to be able to move through these this uh, icy area. So that is awesome also. And that is a, the summary of the past two turns, turn 80 and 81. 36 Panzer Corps has remained on the rail lines, resting and refitting. I didn't want to commit them here. I want to have a ni nice, fresh Panzer Corps to rail into position in probably the next couple of weeks. At this furious pace, the Germans really do need to take a breather, but there are so many opportunities presenting to the Germans each turn that we have to capitalize. We have to push it to the max, and the blood, sweat, and tears expended now during these blizzard months are going to pay dividends. We're really getting into a good position for 1943. And if we destroy these Soviets, or some of them, enable uh, an encirclement here and destroy Soviets here, that's adding to the gruesome tally, but that will more than likely be uh, a 1943 tally. So we're going to call it uh, the losses we just totaled for 1942. 131 Soviet formations destroyed, over 200 if you include all the support elements. And looking at the Soviets' order of battle, we have really reduced their manpower and their tank forces. So once these operations are finished off, uh, whether the Soviets escape, we'll at least seal off the Crimea. That's my plan. I don't intend to attack into 
the Crimea, definitely not during these blizzard months. Where is this opportunity? We'll, we'll take whatever the Soviets give us, but we're not going to push it. We're going to seal them off, mostly with the Romanians, and they've been doing a pretty good job holding their own. And what do the Soviets have, really, to offer to attack out of the Crimea? I'm not sure, but I'm, I don't think it's going to be any considerable force of theirs, because all the trouble is happening along this part of the front, and they're going to have to really do something about this, because their front is really fragmented. In disarray, fragmented gaps almost everywhere for the Germans to capitalize on. At this point, we are ready to hit next turn. So the Soviets are going to have to move pretty quick through this, these blizzard conditions in order to get... in order to avoid, avoid more encirclements of their troops. Fighting to the last, counterattacking. They have a, a considerable air force, fifteen thousand airplanes to our what was it three thousand? <laughs> those those will go down as heroes of the, of the Soviet Union forces fighting out of talent. That is entirely too close to Smolensk. <laughs> I didn't attack back in any of these sectors. Start doing so. We can't be superior across all parts of the front, and this is where our lines are thinnest. And the Soviets are naturally going to have, you know, considerable forces at this point for them in front of Moscow in that region. It's just going to be a couple of weeks before we can get a couple of core back up in that area. Yeah, they're in contact. We should be able to seal them off without much trouble. That little sailing. Attacking over their river too. Retreated. At least gotten some of their troops out of there. Yeah, this is going to take at least two to three weeks to consolidate. Maybe, uh, maybe four to complete the encirclement. Destroy the Soviets and then get those forces back to the front. So we're probably talking the bulk of these forces here and not getting back to the front until February.
but that's all right. I'm not getting greedy. We are delighted how things have gone so far during the winter of 1942. Was a, a limited turn for the Soviets. Attacking where they can, showing they still can attack and mass up, but no real threats. Smolensk, a little annoying, you know. A little raised eyebrows, how close they're getting to Smolensk, but we will take care of that. Alright, we'll go to ground losses. Less than 20. That's great. 48 tanks. Probably not. They did attack, I think, a motorized division or two of ours. So some losses there. And also went weather as well, contributing. So it's very minimal for them. 260 tanks, though. Mounting up. Wow, we're over 9 million. That's fantastic. Yeah, if we can get those Soviets encircled down by the Crimea and sealing off that little salient, we should get take a nice step towards 10 million. All right. Let's look. That would be great to have good weather to chase off those partisans. Oh, my Lord. Look at that. They are partisans, partisans everywhere. What kind of defense are they putting together here? To protect themselves. We should be able to break through in this sector and seal off. At least reach this hex. And, wow, that is a nice, sizable amount of Soviet forces to be encircled and destroyed. Made some attempt to attack against our bridgehead really didn't accomplish anything there and still still defending all across wow right outside of Kur Kharkov <laughs> and how many got away here wow we are going to encircle all of these forces right here that is wonderful wow 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 very good and that takes a sizable piece of their forces out of this sector really in the heart of the front where there's a lot of great open terrain threatening Kursk now from the south and this right here yeah they're building up not overwhelming but enough to push back we're gonna we'll take care of this here <laughs> Belakai Luki, same, continue to move back. Rinse and repeat. And what are we looking like for troop density here in the Soviets? No, still only singles. Talonin, repulsing the Germans again. Again and again. Jeez. Well, these two uh, divisions are going to move in line. we got to take Talonin, get this out of the way. So probably the next two or three turns maybe even four turns it's going to be consolidation reorganizing getting our troops out the front and also capitalizing on a, a few locations where the soviets are vulnerable yeah we should be able to reach that Metro petrov oh let's check out Real quick, info screens, 192, we jumped up, excellent. Almost at 200, major victory, eight more victory points. Very good. All right, we're going to end the video here. Very exciting stuff. Fighting continues well into the winter. It is now 1943. Big news. First week of January 1943. 1943 is the year for us to conclude and win the war on the East. All 
Alright, I hope you enjoyed this video. This is First Fire, non-assault move out.